Hey, it's Josiah. My goal today is to try to teach you the basics of functions in R in just under five minutes. R is a programming language. All programming languages fall broadly into one of two categories. There are object-oriented programming languages like Python, and then there's functional programming languages like R. Functional programming languages emphasize the use of functions. The simplest function that I can think of is y equals mx plus b. Anyone who paid an iota of attention in high school might remember this. We can actually rewrite that same function as f of x or a function of x is equal to mx plus b. So a function takes an input x and provides some output. That's the heart of it. Functions do things. Functions take inputs and produce outputs. Now in R, we begin to write a function using the function keyword with these two parentheses after it. Next, functions typically take one or more arguments, and we provide those as unquoted names inside of those parentheses. And if you have more than one argument, those arguments are separated by commas. The next part of the function is the body. The body is defined by these curly braces. Anything that's written inside of those curly braces is executed by that function. So the body of the function defines what the function will actually do. The function's body must contain valid R code, but it can be any valid R code that you want. Like all things in R, functions are objects, but these are special because you can create them and then call them time and time again with different objects as the inputs. So right here, we've defined a function called print argument that takes one argument called arguments and the body of that function just prints out arguments. So when we run the function print argument, we provide the value, the first argument as a string, and it returns that value to us. So, but the important thing here is that whatever is printed last in a function gets returned from that function. So here we've modified the function. We provide a function argument called arguments, but it's never used inside of the body. Instead on line two here, we just have the value 10. So no matter what I provide, the value 10 is going to be returned. I like functions a lot because they make repeating code easy. I think it makes your code easier to read. And in the end, it might actually make your code a little bit simpler. Once you've written a function, it's actually somewhat easier to share once you figure out how to write an R package. Let's go back to that function we had earlier, that slope intercept function. Let's first start by defining the object name. So I'm gonna call it slope underscore intercept. We instantiate the function by using the function keyword. Now let's provide the argument x to this function. We're gonna to begin to build the function by writing these curly braces here. Now we have this empty body that we're gonna fill. So first we're gonna find an object called m. It's equal to 2.5. b is equal to 10. Let's try using it. Let's create an object called x, it has the values of one through 10. Now we'll pass that vector into the function slope intercept and assign it to the value y. And if we plot it, this is what the plot looks like. It's a linear function. Let's go back to the function arguments and let's dig in a little bit further. Function arguments are again, unquoted and separated by commas. And I like to think of function arguments as objects that are only existing inside of the body of the function. So here we have X plus Y. Now, if we provide any two values to X and Y, so add 10 and two, it's gonna add them together to get 12. So X takes in the value of 10 and Y takes in the value of two. So far in all of these examples, there hasn't been a default argument. And we can set the default value of an argument by using the equal sign. So this function power has two arguments, the first x and the second power. And power has a default value of one. In the body of the function, x is raised to that power. Since there is a default value for the argument power, which in this case again is set to one, the function will always return x to the first power unless we specify something else. In this example, we run the power function on the value three, and we get three because three to the first power is three. But when a function is called without any arguments, it resorts to all the default arguments. But if an argument doesn't have a default value, that code's gonna error out. Arguments without defaults are required. And we can capture arguments if they're missing with, yep, the missing function. Missing will check to see if an argument is missing and it'll return true or false depending if, yeah, it's missing. So let's define this totally useless function called is missing. It takes one argument, x, and it checks to see if that argument is missing. So if we run it without any arguments, it's gonna return true because we didn't provide anything. And now if we provide the character string, nope, is missing is gonna return false because we provided a value to that x argument. I wanna introduce rlang's abort function. So if things aren't looking good, we can always exit the function. And the simplest way to use this function is to pass a message to the abort function. And when that happens, it's going to cause the function to stop and print out an error message. So in this case, when I want to stop the function, I'm going to write the message, something isn't right. And it's really, really helpful because we can combine the missing function with rlang abort inside of a conditional state. So here, if something is missing, we can say, hey, x shouldn't be missing. Or if there isn't missing, we're going to continue with our function and we're going to print out the value of x. Let's work through another example. For some reason, we want this function to not work if power is equal to zero. But what we can do is we can use an if statement to check a condition, and in this case, to see if power is equal to zero. And if it is, we're gonna say, hey, 
power cannot be zero. If it's not, we continue with the function and we provide x to the power of power. Well, in our example, the power can't be zero. So we get this really nice informative message. And in the case where power is equal to two, it continues to work because that conditional was false. So that didn't get evaluated. Now let's try putting all the things that we've learned together into another function. Let's create a function called average, which should behave just like the mean function in base R. This function is gonna have two arguments, x and the na.rm, or short for, do you wanna remove your missing values? It's gonna have a default value of true. The first thing we're gonna do in this function is check if x is numeric. And if it's not numeric, we're gonna exit the function, return an error, say x must be numeric. What happens if na.rm is true? We need some special behavior. The first thing that I'm gonna do is create an object inside of the function called missing index that prints out true or false, depending or not if that value is missing. We can use that vector to subset x and reassign x. In this example, we invert that logical vector because we only want to return the rows where there aren't missing values. And lastly, we take the sum of x and divide by the number of elements in x, and that's going to return our average. So if we take the average of the numbers 1 through 100, we get 50.5. But if we try to take the average of a character vector with the words 1, 2, and 3, we get the error that we expect, where x must be numeric. If we set na to rm equals false, we get a missing value, because r doesn't know how to sum up missing values. And so to recap, functions are objects. They're special objects that take inputs or arguments. All functions return an output, and they must contain valid R code. You can make good functions by handling missing arguments, exiting the function early if you need to, and checking types. So with that, I hope I've given you enough to go and start writing your own function. Or maybe you have a script that has 15 lines of useful code and you copy and paste that everywhere. Why don't you try taking that and turning it into a function?